and sweating. Yep. That's all you're doing. So that's what Flatland is. I would say it was kind of like Flatland was first because of freestyle. Everybody had bikes. They were out on there. Then I would say the big thing came into was uh, vert. That became a big thing because you had the wedge ramps. Then it became the eight foot quarters. Then they decided instead of everyone doing an eight foot quarter pedaling all the way to this next one, how about we bring them closer? They put a they put a flat bottom. Then they put decks. Then they had that. Then they cut them in smaller, put a spine, and you have that street. And then in '92, people were like, "Hey, we can go and ride all these parts and do handrails." kind of like where it is oh and now we'll get even to nowadays mega ramps ramps <laughs> that are made out of rubber did you ever go to mcdonald's and you played on that rubber room well guess what you can do that on your bike now you don't have to go to woodward and spend two thousand dollars for a weekend you can go to almost literally you can go to almost any indoor park now and they have those oh the new thing is the airbags so yes airbags are really cool. airbags are crazy and kids are jump i i i I will tell you this. I went to Woodward, and I stood three stories high. That's how tall it is to drop in to do the freaking uh, the mega ramp. No. <laughs> no. I actually was up there as well, and I was like, I will do this next year. <laughs> I never went back. The scaffold. The scaff. Yeah, you, have you, to, you have to climb up. Yeah. Yo, so you're carrying your stairs. bike, you get up there, and I was looking over and I go, yo, look, in Montana, there's not a building this high. <laughs> I've never yeah. even seen a building this high. I and think we need to give a big props to the guys at Natural Circus, because those guys are insane, by the way. Right. Good job. Right. And I feel like with... And then we get into another topic with Natural Circus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyways. Um... The last discipline is kind of just street riding, street, yeah. where it's been the the most kind of diverse because everybody mm -hmm. can be super unique and just it's like a big toy box. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the world is your playground. Exactly. Right. So it's no longer you have to go here, you have to go there. The world is your playground. I can go anywhere and see a crack and see a bump, and I would have fun. I would have a blast on that yeah. thing. Even if there's a raised sidewalk that a tree fell over. Use that as a ramp. Oh. Yeah, she's here with those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go up, you go see awesome. them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You go see those some stairs? I'll jump those stairs. And right. that's the good thing about street is there's no designated spot. There's no, like, I can't ride this. I can ride this. The only thing limiting you is your imagination. And that comes into categories of types of street riders. Are you a street rider that was a skate park rider and you mm -hmm. turned into Garrett Reynolds and you took all your greatness and you became a street rider? Mm -hmm. Or are you that hood kid and you're like, oh, I'm going to do big handrails and go crazy. And are you the kid that just likes to go and people grind the ledge and hang out with his friends? Or are you that kid that doesn't even ride and he just sits to the side and watches everybody? There is so many... There's subcategories oh, for people. We can just go through them and everybody has those local kids. And you can, you can literally... You can have a group of 10 kids and you can tell what that rider is and how he rides. And there's always that rider who you think's the best rider because he has the nicest bike and he dresses nice. He just has good parents. Yeah. You know, that kid we, that- We know that for those. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, I don't know why I got on that, but I just, I find it funny how many topics there is just from street. Street is the main thing because it's the easiest thing to do. Right. That is where most kids start off street. No one really has the guts to take it to a skate park right away because they'll see other kids that are, have already learned these exactly. uh, 360s, bar spins. So they don't really want to start off at a skate park. They want to go in the street, learn in the front of their house. That's they how just it's hesitant they're, to they're go to the park. Yeah, they'll probably get intimidated. They don't got nobody else to go with. They don't want to go by themselves. Well, you're also forgetting about this. Back in my day, in order to try to learn something, okay. I had to look at a magazine or wait for a video. These mm -hmm. kids can go to their phone and monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. So, oh, hey, that guy's doing a double bar spin. How about I forget the basics of a bunny hop and I just go do the bunny hop oh my and God. double bar? That's crazy because there's so much of that. <laughs> I know you know a bunch of people. They, they can do a tail whip, but he cannot do a 180. I was like, how is that real? Yeah, uh, the, the, the prime example I have is I can go to a skate park and a kid can do a flare, which is a backflip 180, if you don't know that. They can flare, but they cannot 50 stall a quarter Isn't pipe. Crazy? And basics are out. And it's the only reason is, is because they can see it now. When I was younger, I didn't get the idea 
of doing a backwards handrail until Joe Rich in 1998 did one on Road Fools 1. I was like, oh shit, that makes, pardon me, that makes sense. I'm going to try that now, right? Now kids are just like, oh, I have a video. Let me go to this. I can go to Magazine 23 and I can look up any information for this. I can go to BMX Movie Database. I can watch any BMX video. Oh, but this is what set the bar. This thing right here is what set the bar this high now because yeah. everybody's watching each other do these crazy things and everybody wants to outdo each other. Mm -hmm. And now things have gotten pretty ridiculous. People are doing some. Did really you just crazy see what that things. kid did yesterday? No. What happened what? yesterday? What happened yesterday? <clears throat> Brian. Let, let, let me prepare my mind. <laughs> uh, this kid. The only way I can describe it is a tail whip is when you hold both handlebars and you kick the frame around, yep. correct? Yes. Okay. All right? A bri whip on a scooter is when you take the thing and go that way, right? Roll over your shoulder. Yeah. Right? Homeboy <laughs> jumps, grabs a handlebar, takes his body off, and spins the bike like this, spins the bike around, and makes it do a tail whip, and jumps back on it. In the air. In the air. In the air. Everywhere I it's going to even right. imagine exactly. that. Exactly. Uh, uh, he just kind of hangs over and... Flips and rotates. Uh, okay, so guys, they're gonna have to learn how to cut something in there, but I'm gonna show them what this kid did, and they didn't want to put it on there. Hold on. Certain certain websites will put it on there, and other ones will say no to it. So why you get that? Basically, what you were saying in the beginning is just that there's no more fundamentals. So basically, there's the fundamentals so basically, have been cut out. Basically, what it is, right, Fern, is that there's no more fundamentals. So fundamental basically is just the beginning basics of the basic exactly. All right, boys. <laughs> you ready? Check ready. this out. Ready. What? No. What? Oh, what was, was that? Ooh, Ooh. mid air. You don't see it until it's a slow motion. Right, so the we only, will put the that up in a picture. The only thing that people think is they think it's a scooter bri flip. But it's different than a bride because a bride is over. Yeah. So that was right next to Philippine. Yeah. So and, the road and it was in seconds. He had to like seconds. Curl up a bit. Yeah, well, like you had to do a bar but holding it. The funny part is is a lot of people don't want to give scooter kids any recognition or do anything in mm -hmm. BMX, but they need to realize that like you can cross you can move over like I can watch a scooter kid and be like, whoa, I didn't think about that. Right. I can watch a rollerblader and be like, I never thought about doing that, right? There's cross, what do you call it when you... you I just call it cross contamination. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to say that, right? So what it is, is that kid probably rode a scooter, got on a bike and was like, yo, I could do that because I can do that bar I know how to do this. with the right. scooter. So I can do that on a bike. And mm -hmm. people don't give scooters any credit. I will be very honest with you. I can't scooter. Scootering is so hard, and in the BMX industry or in the BMX whatever world, people could look at me and go, you're a fool. How can you say this? I don't give a shit what you say. I can't get on a scooter and do that. Now, I can get on a skateboard. When I was 12, I could front side board slide a six stair handrail. I have photos of it. That's easy for me. But on a scooter, I can't even, I can barely, I can tell with it. That's about it, right? That shit is crazy as heck, and I don't think it gets enough credit, and I understand it because it's the flippity flim flam flum blahs. It's the same thing when you play Tony Hawk. Are you the type of guy that wants a hinna 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 hinna, you press 52 buttons, or do you want to try to skateboard like a real skateboarder when you play that video game? That's how I like my scooter riders. I like my scooter rider instead of being like X, Y, Z, double X, uh, left, right, X, you know what I mean? I just like them to be like, oh, this makes sense. Like, right. it's it's flowing. It's a fluid motion. And that's what I give credits. We actually sponsor two scooter riders. We are the only BMX company that sponsors scooter riders. You can get scooters here. Where are your scooters? We're sold We're out, sold bro. Out. We, got one sold out. we have one days. scooter. I will tell you, we make a headset that fits for your scooter, and we make a grip. We have a brand new grip that's coming out in a couple weeks. It's 180 millimeters long. It's a long grip. And you it's know, softer um, compound than anybody else has out on the market. And we made it so you don't wear through it. We made it so it conforms to your grip. So when you start to wear it out, instead of the tear, it forms until it goes through. It's like a memory foam. 
So uh, almost like that, we tested it for six months and not one person ripped it. Now I'm not saying it can't rip, it's rubber, let's be honest. Right. But we do make it so it will fit for that. So we have grips and we have headsets and we have stickers. But I'm saying we're willing <laughs> to cross over. And that's the whole point. And it's the same thing with the bike shop. We're coming all the way back full circle. Mm -hmm. They have a scooter. I'm seeing a basket for Miss Daisy. Holy yep. shit, I'm seeing glasses. Yep. Or if you're blind and your name's Ray Charles, come on down. We got glasses for you. <laughs> They're cycling sunglasses. We, but uh, what I'm saying, though, is they offer everything. And that's what's great about a bike shop. And... And just for everybody to know, everything that Mr. Ricky is uh, mentioning, and if you find any interest for it, you can actually get it from us. And they're not paying me, all right? I'm saying this shit off the fly. There's no planning. Ricky Look, does what Ricky does. I don't need notes. I don't need to write nothing down. Give me a bag of candy. I got this, something to drink, and I It's can water. <laughs> uh, it is water, <laughs> by the way. I'm just super energetic. And guess what, Frankie? I'm making up for all those times when you heard my voice. Right? No, salam, salaikum, whatever. There you go, brother. <laughs> so um, Ricky does like to talk, but now it's time for a recap. There's a big, big recap today. Oh. So I'll recap, right Ricky, now. just in case you didn't watch our other podcast because you're busy doing your own podcast. Because I'm a jerk. At the yeah, end, go ahead. No, no, no. What you see? So um, every time at the end of the podcast, we always do a recap. The recap, we talk about a brief summary of everything we talked about. So we can say that um, thank you, Ricky, for being here. Okay. We thank you for 100% uh, giving us all the information that right now at the moment you, uh, you get to us and you share Thank you. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that first and foremost. Really appreciate that. Recap. So uh, BMXing, kind of just expressing yourself on your bike, jumping around, doing tricks, doing wheelies, whatever it is that you feel is right. Different yeah. forms of BMXing. Different scenarios and forms of BMXing, such as park, dirt, flatlands, street, race, and also we also touched on the different sizes as. Mr. Ricky was saying there is now 20, there is 20, there's 21 and a quarter, there's 21 and three quarters. So, so, there's, so, there's, so there's definitely a, a variety. If the bike, if you want a bike that would fit to your comfort. And then there's where you can go to ride your bike. There's kind of no wrong place. It's, it's all freestyle. You can go to trails, go to your skate park, go right around in front the of your house. The world is your park. That's right. Huh? <laughs> that good, Ricky? <laughs> And then a uh, special thank you to Mr. Ricky for showing up. Once again, thank, thank you, Mr. Ricky. I want to touch one thing on uh, frames when he was discussing frames. Yes, there is sizes, but you also know that times have changed. So head tubes have gotten steeper to like a, from before they were a 75, now they're like 74.5. So they're more like this instead of being like this or straight. They're more like this because kids are doing nose wheelies. Also, kids nowadays want it easier for them to 360 or 180, so back ends are getting shorter. And instead of being a 14, like they used to be for me and Edwin when we was kids, now they're 12.5. I thought 13 was the smallest. You're telling me it's 12.5, okay? And now also, I want to tell you this. Tires started out at 1.75. Tires are now... <laughs> and guess what? They used to be 40 PSI. Now they're 110. <laughs> Everything is getting bigger and getting better. The only thing that I can say that has stayed the same is pegs at one time were 5 inches. Pegs are down to 4. Now, us, we make a 4.75. Pegs are starting to get bigger. Bars used to be what? 27 and a quarter by freaking 27. Now bars are 29.5 by 9.75. The width and the rise. So the good thing about technology with bikes nowadays, when you come in, if you have lower back problems, you can go over here and they are carrying the GTs. The JTs have a higher standover. And also the back ends and the fronts will work great with your lower back. Before... You used to have small bars and you were tight and you would bend. Nowadays you sit up and it's better and it's good for the back. 
These are obviously things that you can learn when you come to bike club. And this is all information <laughs> that we will be giving you firsthand, physically, verbally, um, when you do come into bike lane. Um, again, this has been the BMX episode with Mr. Montana Ricky. I am I Frankie. Is from Montana. <laughs> oh. I, I, had to do it. I, had to I am uh, Frankie. Frankie with a Y. I'm Mr. Fern. Or Fernie. Wilmer. I'm Ed. And this has been another episode. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Rick E. This is Montana Ricky. Came all the way from New Jersey. Three Frank hours Montana, in traffic. Just to see us. And thank you guys for showing up to see us as well. And go check out Merrick. <laughs> Link will be yes. at the bottom. <laughs> With a Y, not a I. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God.